What is going on fellow outlaws? Outlaw Gary here and in today's video we're doing seven tips and tricks all Red Dead Redemption 2 players must know to excel at this amazing game. Of course, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button as I upload every single day. And of course, if this video helps you and you enjoy it, drop it a like. And in the comment section, you'll find some extra tips brought to you by the awesome community here, the fellow outlaws, letting you guys know what are some things that have helped them in their progress in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. Hopefully you're having a great day and let's do it. Number one is coming in with hunting. Now, I personally go hunting a lot in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's one of my favorite pastimes in this game. And honestly, there's a lot of little secrets you can do when it comes to hunting that many people don't know about. One of them being the fact that you can always steal a secondary horse and throw the carcass on the back of that horse. On top of that, you can also throw a large carcass on the top of your horse, but there's also one thing you didn't know. It seems like most people know you can steal a secondary horse and throw a large carcass on it. But, but did you know that you can actually sell three large carcasses to a butcher at once? Now it's a little tricky, but the way you do it is you simply grab your horse, steal another horse, and when you have two horses, you're gonna wanna use your lasso. Now, I know that may sound really weird. Like, Garrett, what are you talking about? Well, if you have a large carcass on the back of your horse, a large carcass on the back of the horse you've stolen, and a large carcass on the floor, you can actually drag the large carcass with your lasso to the butcher. Now, this method only works if you are close to a butcher. If you're very far away, dragging this thing is going to be super ineffective for time. Now, there's various places you can actually make super good use of this spots like strawberry roads and valentine now of course each of these places are war zones depending on the time that you go to these locations and on the lobbies highly recommend you do this method in strawberry as there's elks moose and various large animals around strawberry and hardly anyone ever goes to strawberry so if you want a great spot to make some good money, right on the outskirts of Strawberry, you can find some big game, steal an extra animal, which is a horse, throw a large carcass on your horse, on the extra horse, and then just drag one with your lasso. If you wanted to as well, you could do this same method, but with a wagon. That's possible as well. That's one of the cooler tips that we have in this video, just because I wanted to showcase this brand new thing that I thought many people knew about, but not many people know. So a quick little tip for you guys. Number two is coming in with something pretty obvious. I mean, this is something that I think most of you guys know about, but many of you guys do not act on it. And I highly recommend it. So your weapons in Red Dead Redemption 2 are, you know, your go-to for self-defense. You always want to make sure that your weapons are not only clean, but also customized. Customizing your weapon will not only enhance its stats, but it will also let you have better effectiveness when using said weapon. Now, if you add a wrap to this weapon when customizing it, it will actually reduce the degradation on this weapon. So over time, weapons degrade. They get dirty and they just become less effective. But if you customize your weapon and add a wrap to it, your weapon degrades 10% slower than it would if it didn't have a wrap. So spending an extra 40 bucks to add a wrap, depending on the weapon type, is super worth it. And I highly recommend you guys do so just so you can get the most out of your weapon without it being super dirty and it being absolutely useless. Try it out. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think about customizing weapons. Number three, we got horses. Now, for some reason, as of lately, I've been getting a lot of you guys suggesting this tip. And this is something I've been talking about forever now. And it's something I've known about for a very long time. Pressing L3 while riding your horse increases its stamina. The reason why it does this is because you're actually patting your horse with L3. It doesn't just randomly give your horse stamina. What you're doing is you're giving that, that little morale boost to your horse like hey bud you can do this keep going and your horse gets increased stamina because of it because it gives it that extra motivation it needs to continue its path now one other great tip that i've been talking about since the beginning of red dead redemption 2 is the auto run feature now if you guys have never used the auto run feature in red dead redemption 2 or in red dead online it's super easy to use all you need to do is activate your cinematic mode with a waypoint placed anywhere on the map. Once you have that waypoint placed and you're in cinematic mode, simply press X, 
tap it, tap it, then hold it on a road and your character will auto run to that waypoint. Now, one big thing I wanna let you know about is that in online, once it gets the waypoint, it sometimes keeps running. Like it will just run past your waypoint. It's a super weird issue I've seen sometimes happen in different lobbies. So be, be like very like aware that if you wanna go to like tumbleweed and you put your waypoint, sometimes you'll just run right past it. And I have no clue why that happens. The next tip for horses I wanna give you guys before we leave tip number three is gonna be pressing left on your D-pad and going to stables to revive your horse. Now, as many of you guys know, horse insurance is somewhat valuable in Red Dead Online. For some extra cash, you can buy horse insurance that allows you to revive your horse for $2 cheaper. Now, doing the math, your horse would have to die a ton for horse insurance to be worth it. But if you have a lot of extra cash and you want to buy horse insurance, you might as well. It's available to you, buy it. But if you didn't know about the left on the D-pad trick to revive your horse from anywhere in the map, this is a great way to go ahead and get that horse back alive without having to go all the way to a stable. Number four is coming in with your camp. Now, depending on whether you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 Story or Red Dead Online, both of them have similarities. Both of them can be used to fast travel, but it's gonna cost you. Various things in your camp in Red Dead Online and in Red Dead Redemption 2 Story have upgradable features from different parts of your camp that allow you to have a different NPC with more clothes to different types of tables and cosmetic items that can be found all across your camp. The camp is a great feature to have, but it's not really needed. My biggest problem with my camp is that it's always moving, and right now in Red Dead Online, it's sort of useless. And in Red Dead Redemption 2 Story, all you can really do is just make other people happy. It's worth it to upgrade your camp in Red Dead Redemption 2 Story, but right now in Red Dead Online, it really isn't worth it. So, save your money. I'm sure in the near future, we're going to have some amazing camp upgrades, as well as camp DLCs that are really going to change the way Red Dead Online plays with your camps because right now they don't do much guys they, they really don't now if you made it this far in the video i want to thank you really quickly before moving on to number five if you guys do enjoy the video and have learned anything from these tips so far be sure to drop it a like let's go for 2654 likes for this video and of course let's get on to tip number five tip number five is pretty simple a lot of people know about this from my community but a lot of new players may not when playing Red Dead Online, fast traveling is made super easy. All you gotta do is press start and scroll through where you wanna spawn on the map. Here's the trick though. There's a little bit of a secret with that. Anywhere you spawn, let's say you choose Lemoyne. If you choose Lemoyne, you're gonna be populated in a lobby where there's a lot of players in Lemoyne, Saint Denis and that whole area. But if you choose an area like New Austin and fast travel to Saint Denis, there's not gonna be anybody there. So if you ever want to go to a location and you don't want to be bothered by griefers, always spawn far away from where you want to be. Just spawn in the opposite direction that you want to be at. Reason you do this is because there'll be less griefers and people to bother you in whatever that you need to do, whether it's hunting, fishing, or simply just free roaming. Always spawn away from where you want to be so that there are less people around you. And honestly, it's one of the like must know tips for Red Dead Online. I love this tip. But the problem is the more people I tell, the more people that will be fast traveling, and the more griefers that might be near me, maybe I shouldn't share this tip. Number six is something I've said before. Piggybacking off the last tip in regards to griefers and lassos. Now, if you've been playing Red Dead Online for quite a while, you might have ran into some griefers. And sometimes these griefers like to do more than just shoot. They like to use their lasso. And honestly, both of them are equally annoying whether they're a lasso griefer or a varmint rifle griefer where they're just shooting you all the time they're both super annoying but one way to combat one of the lasso griefers is by simply pulling out your knife every time you pull out your knife while being hogtied you actually break the rope and you break out of the hog tie. Now, if you didn't know this, it's a major must know tip lassoing or getting lassoed. You take out a knife, it automatically breaks you free. You can stand up and defend yourself. Down with the griefers, we can show them that we can rise up together, guys, and destroy this annoying breed of human. I don't even know why they exist, but it's a thing. Lastly, coming in number seven, I would normally say, guys, the biggest tip would just be watch my channel more. But when it comes to Red Dead Online, 
Using ability cards is more important than you could ever imagine. Number seven is in discussion of ability cards. And it's something I've talked about here in the channel pretty in depth, but I want to do another video soon, really focusing and honing in on the must have ability cards and the best ability cards for every scenario. But let's talk about this really quickly. Ability cards are really important because they can sometimes add health, help you regen health, give you increased stats and more. They can help your longevity of life and other things that you may not have available to you by not having these ability cards. So if you have not looked into your ability cards, make sure you guys do so right now. There's some super things in there that might throw you off and surprise you because they're so valuable and awesome to your Red Dead Online playthrough. So if you have not seen your ability cards, open them up right now by holding L1 and pressing triangle on PS4. Highly recommend it. I promise you, you won't regret it. Overall, if this video has helped you, make sure you guys drop a like. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. We're the fastest growing Red Dead Redemption 2 channel on YouTube right now. I want to thank you guys so much for the amazing start to 2019. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the other videos I've uploaded today as we've uploaded two other videos because we upload three videos a day, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 5 p.m. But actually right now, the schedule's a little off because, well, I, I messed up yesterday. So right now, I think the schedule is actually 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 5, 15 p.m. It's a little, it's a little weird, but it'll get back to the normal schedule. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys tomorrow with more videos. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.